Hey guys, it's Mihao again. In this video, we will cover the configuration of the project server for TIA Portal. Project server allows multiple users to work on the same project, but it also offers version history and revision tracking. In this video, I will show you how to set it up. And in my other video, link to which you can find in the description below, and I will show you project server um, from the TIA Portal user side. Okay, so we are back in my pristine VM at running Windows 10. So the question is, where can you actually find the install media for the project server? Well, you will not find it on the support side, or at least not directly. So the install media for the project server is actually part of the uh, Step 7 DVD, the TIA Portal DVD. So if we do go on the support side, uh, and look for it, we will not find it, but if we look for the um, installation media for Step 7 V16 uh, download, uh, we can find the second DVD for uh, TI Portal, which actually includes um, some optional software, including the project server. So if you download this DVD or this DVD, the difference is uh, this one has WinCC Unified, and this one has WinCC Professional. But if we are only interested in the project server and you don't have a TI V16 um, install media handy, you can just download any DVD to, uh, from here. And I will inc include this link in the description of the video as well. I already downloaded it. I have it on my uh, desktop. If we just open it up, go to support, this is where you can find the TIA Portal Project Server V16 Install Media. So, well, I didn't really need to copy to the desktop, do I? Let's cancel this. Let's just run it directly from here. Now it will probably ask us to restart the PC. Let's hope not, but we'll see in a second. Ah, so I guess, yeah, see you in a sec. Okay, we are back now. The setup is automatically restarting itself. Go, job done, wasn't even a minute. Uh, the TI Portal project server is now installed, but this doesn't mean it's running, it's not ready for you yet. When you go to your start menu, you should now find uh, two recently added objects. We have the TI Portal um, TI Project Server V16 configuration tool and TIA Project Server V16 administration tool. The one that we will be using today is the configuration tool. As you can imagine, the configuration tool allows you to configure the, uh, the project server. The administration tool you would use when the project server service is actually running already. So let's go with the configuration. Let's start it up. And as you can see, currently, there is no service installed, which I guess is the reason why it's not running. So we need to first specify where we want to store our project. So find a location on your hard drive at where you are happy to store the projects. I will make a dedicated folder for it. Uh, projects. And then you need to define how many revisions you'd actually want to store. So the project server works in a way where uh, whenever you make a change, you feel it's ready to share with maybe the rest of the team or you want to just push it to the server to save the changes should something go wrong, it creates a new revision. And it has like a rolling buffer of revisions. So it will save the history and the notes about what was changed for all the revisions that you save, but it then has a rolling buffer of the revisions that it actually keeps uh, on the hard drive. If I say 10, it's going to be 10 revisions. So if I create an 11th, a new one, it's going to delete the very first one that I created. But don't worry, there's also a facility to like save a revision that you want. So if there is a major revision, you know that this is a working revision, you might put like a small padlock on it, so the server will not overwrite it and will always keep it and will never overwrite it for you. So I would say there is probably no need to put it to something like unlimited. Unlimited is when it saves as many as you want, as long as you have enough um, hard drive space. So you could end up with like tens of thousands of revisions if you have a project that gets so much development. So I don't see any, any proper reason for it. I would say now 25 is 
probably enough for most projects as long as you remember to put padlocks on the on the major revisions maybe you know take backups on a separate hard drive every now and then you should be perfectly fine but it depends on the on the type of projects you have so i leave uh, this choice to you another thing that is crucial to at least think about is the connection settings so by default HTTP is selected, but I would strongly encourage you to switch to HTTPS. If you leave it running at HTTP, uh, your traffic between different instances of TI portal and the central instance of the project server, this is not encrypted, no TLS is applied. So anyone in the middle, you know, between your, your project server and your TI portal instance, if they were listening, uh, they could see the traffic, they could see uh, your project being transferred. So if you switch to HTTPS, this is when TLS is used and your traffic um, is secure. So again, I strongly recommend you use HTTPS. The port by default is 8735. Uh, and again, it's up to you to change it or not. Uh, if you don't see any reason, like if you start wondering, should I change it, then probably you don't. So just leave it at 8735. Uh, that's okay. Timeout profile. Well, if you have a very slow network or you know that maybe some engineers will be connecting uh, through wireless, maybe through you know 3G, for example, some slow network somewhere, you might want to change it to slow so the server um, doesn't disconnect them if they have problems with uh, with connection. For normal comms, you know, um, just normal fast internet connections, I will just leave it at fast, that's fine. The last thing you can do, you can um, define a certificate. So if you had... A domain, maybe you had a certificate for this domain, uh, you put it in the correct place in the hard drive and it pops up here. This one you can say, yeah, use existing certificate. If you don't have a certificate, uh, this one you can just leave it at default and say, yeah, create a new self-signed certificate. You are not a, a recognized certificate authority, so this is when it always you know, starts telling you, hey, this certificate came from uh, someone that, that we don't know isn't a, a recognized uh, institution but other than this it's still a certificate it's okay and it's 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 fine so let's install service now so after this um, step is done our project server will already be configured and ready to run but not running yet oh there you go there's an a log one warning so as you can see there's quite a long log let's just look for this warning the warning actually isn't any problem it's just a warning telling you hey there's the certificate fingerprint of the certificate that we use, that we created. You might want to, to, to save it and then compare whenever you know, connect from your TI instance if it is actually giving you this fingerprint that it should be giving you. So file, let's just save it in a safe place. So for me, save it on the desktop for now. Okay, so it's installed now, but it's still stopped. So we need to start this service. And then when you start the service, it will automatically start whenever you start your, uh, your machine. So our job here is done. Uh, TI Portal Project Server V16 is now configured. Um, and we can see if we can connect to this using the administration tool. So administration tool allows you to administer different servers. It doesn't have to sit on this specific PC. You can administer servers remotely. So I could have the administration tool on the same PC that my TI Portal is running, and I could administer uh, this machine remotely from there. But for now, just to see if it works, Let's try to connect localhost over HTTPS. There you go, it asks us, okay, uh, is this certificate uh, correct? This is where you could check the fingerprint if it's an okay certificate. So yeah, all good. And as we currently have no projects, uh, that's it. This is where you can uh, start adding um, different users uh, and maybe you know, adding more servers and so on and so on. You have some uh, extra additional settings, but there isn't an awful lot to do uh, in the administration tool, but we'll cover the administration tool uh, in my other video, uh, link to which you can find again uh, below, that tells you how to actually use the project server. Here we will only configure it and make sure it's up and running and ready for us. The thing that's left to do is to actually uh, set up the firewall, because I, am, I have the firewall running, which means that whenever I try to connect to the, this machine, the port that we are using with the project server uh, it's probably still closed, so I won't be able to achieve a remote connection from outside. So I need to go to the uh, firewall settings. And let's add a new rule. The port that I selected was 8735. If you decided to use a different port, uh, just uh, apply it correctly here. 
yeah, allow the connection and I'm gonna call it project server. So now our um, machine that has the project server uh, should be allowing connections on port 8735. The service is running. Just as a final check, let's quickly switch to another um, virtual machine that has TI running and let's see if we can achieve the connection. So there you go, we have a different machine. This one's running TIA. Um, to test the connection, we will just go project, project server, manage server projects. This way you can click manage server. This will take you actually to settings of TIA. So you could actually go tools and settings uh, and then project server. And this is where we can actually uh, define where we can actually define uh, new servers. So let's add a server connection. Server alias will be uh, test server. Oh, you know what? I'm going to call it automation station. So automation station. Uh, I'm using HTTPS, the host um, locally, so 192.168.0.15 on the default port of 8735. Yeah, good. Add. So this now added. Let's try to um, connect to it. So again, project server, manage server projects. Select it from the list. And there you go, it asks us if we are happy with this certificate. Yeah. And there you go, you can now start working with your project. You can start adding new, uh, new projects. And please uh, watch the other video if you have never used project server before, where I'm explaining uh, how to use the project server, what you can do, how you can uh, work on, on one single project from the different stations, how you can have multiple engineers working on the same project uh, while keeping the project history, the revisions, the notes and so on.